You're listening to The Secrets of Star Trek, where we discuss the hidden layers and deeper meanings found in all the Star Trek TV series, movies, and more. And today we're discussing the Next Generation episode, Haven. I'm Dom Bettinelli, and joining me today on the panel is Father Corey Stika. Hey, Father Corey. How's it going? Very good. Thank you. Jimmy Aiken is unavailable today to join us, uh, conveniently avoiding having yeah. to talk about Haven. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> he didn't no, watch he had, it. He did yeah. give a summary, but he, he, yes. Uh, I, yeah, he's I not having to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have to say he did watch it for us. So that's, uh, that, that it's, uh, he has some important things to do. So, uh, folks, be sure to follow the secrets of Star Trek at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, tune in your favorite podcast app, or at the StarQuest YouTube channel where you can see our lovely faces and also be sure to hit the bell to get notifications. You can, I want to tell you about another show on the StarQuest network you're sure to enjoy called The Secrets of Technology, and you can find that wherever fine podcasts are found or at sqpn.com slash technology. So we're talking about Haven. This is a first season episode, the 10th episode of the first season, so you know. It's not great, but <laughs> uh, it is. Uh, it air, first aired in the end of November 1987. So uh, interesting wow. timing there. Yeah, it goes back. So uh, here's the recap that Jimmy provided us uh, for this episode. You just imagine me doing this in Jimmy's voice. <laughs> this week, Captain Picard and the gang go to the planet Haven, which is basically the same kind of beauty planet as Risa. While there, they get a communication indicating it's time for Deanna Troy to have her arranged marriage to a guy named Wyatt Miller. She ghosted him on the marriage years ago when she joined Starfleet, thinking he'd never followed through. But now Wyatt, his parents, and Lawaxana Troy are here for the ceremony. Lawaxana begins causing her usual problems with her over-the-top personality. Riker gets all passive-aggressive because Deanna has been keeping <laughs> secrets and never told him about Wyatt. And Wyatt himself thought that Diana would be a blonde bombshell that's been his fantasy woman for years. But it turns out that he's unknowingly been in contact with some plague-carrying space aliens. Mm. And the blonde bombshell fantasy woman is one of them. The plague-carrying space aliens show up wanting to find an isolated part of Haven to live out the rest of their lives. But Wyatt decides to ghost Diana right back. And he beams over to the plague ship. He's decided that he wants to try to cure the plague aliens since he's a doctor. And since he's now exposed to the plague, he can never beam back. So the wedding is called off and everyone goes on their way. The end. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Luwaxana's first appearance yep. on Star Trek. So that's interesting. So you'll have a long, notable series of appearances going into DS9 territory, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, well, yeah because her and Odo have a... Not really relationship, but a, a friendship, a close yes. friendship that develops. Right, right. She does basically does to Odo what she ends up doing to Picard. She doesn't do it to Picard so much here, like imagining that he wants a romantic relationship with her. But she starts it it's right at the very end of this episode. Oh, uh, there's a couple of times she she makes comments about, oh yeah, he's <laughs> he's just fantasizing what I look like naked and things <laughs> like that, you know. Right, right. Just so Major Barrett Roddenberry, it's just so great in this. And I mean, we have to really extol her as, you know, she was Christine Chapel in the original mm -hmm. series. She was the voice of the Enterprise computer. Um, but this might be her best role in all of Star Trek. It's just it so was, over the top. It's definitely the one she had the most fun with, you can imagine. You know, in a way, I kind of think of it, she's not evil, obviously, but she's still kind of that over the top personality that we get from Michelle Gomez in Doctor Who mm -hmm. and Missy. Yeah. And it's just so fun to watch, you know, just because it makes everyone so uncomfortable. It's so yeah. great. Well, uh, she's got like absolute candor to use the term from Picard. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it's just like she lays it out there and she's like, I know what you're thinking. And, you know, here's why you're wrong or here's why you're right or here's why you're ridiculous. Or <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And and frankly, the best parts of this episode are Luoxana and and data data's mm -hmm. fascination i mean he's he has some funny bits here we'll, we'll get into um and and th that's the part of this episode that i always remembered and enjoyed the troy and riker acting like yeah. lovesick teenagers that's just embarrassing that's to use a, a modern term cringy i yeah. just i mean they really act immature in this and then this wyatt thing 
I don't know. It's just that whole love triangle thing just feels awkward and weird and painful. Yeah, Riker is very weird. Weird. I mean, I, I can't think of any other word than weird. He's just <laughs> very standoffish He's and moody and moody. Yeah, like, yeah. I love the the idea that you know the lovesick teenager that just got jilted, but it's just. <laughs> He's not Riker in this. Yeah, he know? acts rude. He walks out. He makes comments. Like, yeah, and he's like a fourteen-year-old boy. Yep. <laughs> like, I have a I have a thirteen-year-old boy. He's almost turned fourteen. And yeah, this is a very familiar. Yeah, it's just and and, and Wyatt is he becomes an interesting character, but he sure doesn't start out as one. Oh my gosh, he's, I mean, he's sort of like he's like an embarrassing, lovesick, nerdy teenager at the beginning yeah. too. He's clutching his little portfolio of images and of the woman he's dreamed of and and he's like visibly disappointed you don't even need to be a, a telepath to see that he was disappointed <laughs> yeah that he's got I, this beautiful woman that he's yeah. engaged albeit by arranged marriage but yes. that he's engaged to but it's Let not me, the right beautiful woman that he wanted yeah. <laughs> i was gonna say <laughs> i've met marina certis in person and let me tell you, you, I, you would not be disappointed <laughs> to, yeah. the, to, to be would be arranged marriage, uh, was, you know, especially at, at, at that age uh, she was. Um, yeah, I, I, I was maybe 18, 19. I mm. told her, you're even more beautiful in person when I said that. I can't believe I said it. I'm not sure how, but I, I actually said that to her. <laughs> I'm embarrassed now thinking about, about well, me at 18. And then you, you you see her personality, Maria yeah. Sturgis's actual personality, and she's a hoot. She's very funny. She was so nice. I was wearing a Spuds McKenzie t-shirt, and, <laughs> and she commented on it. She said that um, um, Tashiar, the actress, um, uh, Cros uh, Denise, Denise Crosby. Crosby, has one too, and she's so kind. I mean, to this oh, yeah. nerdy, geeky kid at a Star Trek and, convention. And she's probably heard it a thousand times, at least right. know, at that time she did. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, that was uh, very nice of her. So that was my, that's my Marina Sirtis moment uh, uh -huh. where I embarrass myself. Um, but in this, it's oh, cringy. Uh, another interesting point is this is the second and last time we ever hear Riker called Bill, mm -hmm. which I'm, I'm kind of glad for because he doesn't f feel like a Bill. He's more of a Will. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's just because of familiarity, but it just seems weird. Yeah. It feels weird to call him Bill uh, in this. But the, well, it's, it's especially since, of course, you know, you, you have to wonder if that was a, a nod to Shatner. Bill Shatner, right? Because he was definitely a Bill. Bill Shatner. He was well. He was known. I mean, he's he's supposedly known, and I know uh, um, uh, Jimmy will call him Bill Shatner when he's we're talking about him. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think that's what his friends call him. And so he would have been called that on set and that sort of thing. So, yeah, that's true. Um, so, to talk about the story, we have this planet called Haven, which Jimmy says is another beauty planet like Ryza. So, this is sort of Ryza before Ryza. It's not so much a pleasure planet, yeah. but it's more like a spa planet. Yeah. Right? I was going to say it's a spa or a, a, like a monastery type thing. Not, not in that sense of, you know, celibate monks or anything like that, but the idea of, a peaceful, relaxing place where you can go and, you know, and be healed of mind, body, and, and spirit, yeah. and that sort yeah. of thing. California, basically. So, <laughs> wants <laughs> to be. Yeah, like, right, right. <laughs> um, so, you, you know, they have this discussion on the bridge. The Haven has legends about healing souls and mending broken hearts. And Data, being Data, says legends are unsupported by fact. And Picard says legends are the spice of the universe because sometimes they come true. Like, what nonsense is this? <laughs> We're getting spouted here. It's kind of a, I mean, I know it's supposed to be foreshadowing because, you know, we have not yep. exactly healing for these people at the end, but, you know. Um, hope of it anyways. The hope of it. Yeah. So they, they don't actually end up on the planet anyway, but. Uh, so. now, now, I know Rod Roddenberry was a secular humanist, but yeah. did he also have some, I'm wondering if he had some, you know, kind of that, that secular humanist Buddhist thing that's so popular where it's a kind of a mix of, you know, it's, it's like the, this, the mysticism, if you will, of Buddhism with the, you know, secular humanist ideas. Cause that's Maybe. what that sounds like. That, that that's what that sounds yeah. like. So apparently, um, yeah, the episode was written by Tracy Torme, but the original story was by Lan O'Coon. I don't know. Um, that, that name is not familiar to me. I don't know if, the, if they've 
submitted other stories. I'm just quickly yeah. looking. He, oh no. Oh, he was a co-writer on several episodes of The Love Boat. Mm. <laughs> Which, wow, that does that explain a lot? A lot about lot. this episode. <laughs> 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 wow, that this is a basically a Love Boat episode. Frankly, that's um, <laughs> folks. If you the have Enterprise, never, The Love Boat. If you're too young to have experienced Love Boat, you yeah yeah that's trust me. <laughs> Uh, and so Tracy Torme, what else does Tracy Torme, the name is familiar. So what else has she done? Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, he, by the way, sorry, he's one of those rare male Tracys. Right. Uh, uh, I actually knew a, a, another guy named Tracy who, um, he, he told interesting stories about having the name Tracy as a guy throughout life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, kind of like boy else? named Sue. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Uh, wrote, Co-wrote The Big Goodbye, co-wrote uh, co Conspiracy, so um, wrote The Royale, Manhunt, so he's, he, but, but all TNG things, so mm -hmm. um, interesting. Um, all right, so anyway, we have Haven, uh, we have the Legends, um, we, have, we have Riker, who's listening to a music hologram of beautiful women playing ancient yeah. peak it was did you find that kind of weird oh kind of yeah <laughs> okay. that was that i mean don't get me wrong i i i could see will Riker sitting there watching you know beautiful women on their hollow tv but still it was just but you know it's kind of like that how you know this is the 24th century but he's into jazz it's yeah that same kind of anachronism that they really for whatever reason they really liked especially with tng but not yeah. just with tng with other other star treks as well they they often want to bring in um connections to our time to make that connection to the audience mm -hmm. yeah i can see that kind of like um, the, the 20 you know 21st century rave on disc discovery you know kind of right. remember that that uh, the time yeah. loop episode where they had the 21st century rave on the ship that's like that right. probably isn't gonna be a popular thing in the 24th century or 23rd and, century Yes. And Tom Paris's fascination with 20th century TV and yep. all that sort of stuff. Right, right, right. That, that's true. So, um, yeah. And they obviously don't have voice controlled holograms then because he has a clicker to, to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to pause it. Yeah. I got to have the remote control. <laughs> I, just, I thought that was funny. Um, so the, uh, you know, then we go to the transporter room. That's where he's been called. And we have an unknown object that's being beamed aboard. Oh, beam it up. Not a good idea. I'm not sure that's a good idea no. to be they, they unknown objects of Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's and it's a creepy singing telegram box. Um, oh, that was really so, creepy. So weird. Like um, that's uh, full of jewels, which I'm not sure. Maybe they're decorative because we don't. Of course, we don't use money in the 24th century. Remember, that's like we yep. don't have an economy. But uh, okay. And Deanna walks in. Why does Deanna show up? Like, she just kind of shows up. Hey, what's going on, guys? Like, again, sort of like an episode of Friends, you know, where yeah. <laughs> Joey comes through the door. It's like this, hey, guys, what's going on? Oh, it's a box for you. Okay, we'll, we'll go with yeah. that. <laughs> so, and so we find out that Deanna is engaged and to be married. This is news to everyone, including Riker, who I think he's justifiably, you know, upset a little bit. Like, yeah. I thought we had a thing, although it was an on again, off again thing, and still yeah. is throughout the entire series until finally was it uh, oh, Picard? Really? Oh, they got married in no. um, Nemesis. Yeah. Yes. Was it? Was it Nemesis yeah, because or Insurrection? In the, insurrection is where they they kind of rekindled their relationship, and he shaved off his beard. Right. Right. So it's or Nemesis. She shaved off his beard, anyways. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Another awkward scene. But uh, yeah, yeah. Nemes Nemesis um, is the wedding, right? That yep. that starts with the wedding. So, um, so but then they have this meeting with Picard in his ready room. For, for some reason, this is his business, <laughs> I guess. Um, and he's Riker is inappropriately angry here, mm -hmm. like, uh, and in fact, continues throughout the episode to be inappropriately angry and upset at different times. I mean, I get that he why he's upset. But dude, be a professional. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I, I well, and, was... and again, it's not like at, at least at this time the relationship is going anywhere between them. So he yeah. he cut it off, you know, or, or they right. cut it off way back for his when. career. Yeah. Yep. 
Um, although, you know, I mean, this idea that you can't be married or be in a relationship and be a starship captain, it kind of, you know, especially when know. you've got, you know, the cruise ship enterprise that you're in charge <laughs> of where you've already got families on board anyways. Come aboard. We're expecting <laughs> you. I mean, I am not going to leave that one alone. The love boat thing. Uh, but yeah, but it is this weird relationship. Are they together or not? If they're in a rom- romantic relationship, what right does he have to be upset and all that sort of thing? If if they're not, you know, in a relationship. Um, and then we have another awkward mo- moment where Deanna meets with Wyatt. It's super awkward. Like we mentioned yeah. that, that, you know, he's obvious. She's obviously not what he thought uh, he was going to get. And, um, and then his parents are there. Um, and then um, they come aboard first, the Billers. And then we have um, Loaxana. And <laughs> Troy makes the understatement of the year, of the, of the, <laughs> of the series, which yeah. he says, I should warn you, sir, to Picard, my mother is a little eccentric. A little. A little. <laughs> a little. A little. That's, that's <laughs> like saying, you know, the sun is a little warm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, um, and then we have her and Mr. Hom. Mr. Hom has only one line in the entire series. No matter, however he shows up, he is the one line in this episode that he says. That's right. And he never speaks again. Yeah. And, and he's supposed to be mute. Like there's supposed to be like this idea that he doesn't talk at all. So when he does give that one line, it's kind of shocking to everyone. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, looks <laughs> on maneuvers Picard into carrying her luggage. So he's like straining like this way. Yeah. You know, I gotta give Patrick Stewart a, a, some credit on this one. It was it was a, a funny physical. And humor then of course, when when Deanna finally kind of says, "Okay, he's a captain. He doesn't care. He's not your steward." You know, and Mr. Hom <laughs> right. just picks it up like it's no big deal. <laughs> yes, yeah. Is the actor who plays Mr. Hom is he the is he the same actor in the Bond movies? Um, Jaws. No, no. no. Okay, he's I didn't not. Think so. Um, I can't, I, you know, I, I, he's been on other things because he's, he's one of those actors, or at least it was at one point where anytime they needed the big goofy looking guy, he was <laughs> yeah. it, you know? I mean, he could be Lurch in the Adams family, you know, that, I mean, he's really got that, that size Very and the similar, look. Yeah. Look. Yeah. yeah. He is Dutch. Apparently I'm looking at his, uh, his, uh, huh. biography now. So he is Dutch. Um, oh, he was Lurch of the Adams family. Oh, that's oh, awesome. Was. Yes. I just oh. was looking it up. <laughs> I, guess that, that, I guess that after 20 years, yeah. Yeah, in the 1991 film, uh, 30 oh, years. Oh, okay. <laughs> 1991 is 30 years. Uh, sorry, Father. Oh, I, no, I was, I was thinking Adams family as in the old original. Adam oh, family. no, no. He was in the 91 movie. Um, okay. Yeah. In the, okay, uh, yeah. Was he? Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Uh, da, da, da. Yep, and then reprise the role in the ninety three sequel. Okay, um, so uh, and Picard has this forced politeness while he's around Luxana. You know that that where he's trying to be polite and trying to yep. be diplomatic and very British because because oh, yes. Patrick Stewart is British. Uh, and it's just it's it's a fun connection there. That I just really well, enjoy I, that. I love it when she says, "Well, you may go now," because yes. of course he's like, "I got to go." I go, and he does that sarcastic bow. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's so good so good um i mean i can imagine being deanna how embarrassing it would be like my 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 mom being this to my boss you know it's yeah. just like oh i just feel this is going to affect my career well, <laughs> well, and, yeah and not not just not just her boss but the actual you know the, to be a captain of a ship has yes. some honor and you know there's you know with, there's you treat a captain very differently than you would right. an average crew member, right? You know, and and because they have respect that that they have earned by that position. And he's the captain of the flagship of the fleet, even you know. Yep. Oh, so uh, we have a scene where Deanna and Wyatt are talking about being together, but getting married, and you know they're sort of kind of getting to know each other because again, it's an arranged marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know we're going to be together for a long time. Well, that's the point of marriage, isn't it? And I'm like, wow, that's refreshing. Yeah, I love so, that line. This idea of you know, marriage is something for the rest of your life. Wow. Yes, it is a big deal. We don't just enter into marriage so that we can leave it later or introduce other people into it, which is are elements that kind of come up in other in, in later series. They sort of mm-hmm. want to update the, this idea of marriage. Is marriage can have multiple people in it, you know, polyamorous and all these other things. And it's yep. like, no, 
No, that's nope. that's not marriage. And and it's one man, one woman. That's it. Right. Exactly. Speaking of, you know, updating marriage. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. So, uh it was refreshing to see this a bit of a throwback in this in this uh episode. So, uh and in that scene, we have an interesting interesting acting moment here where we have um Wyatt is telling Deanna he's not disappointed in her not being his fantasy girl, you know, like, Oh, yeah. you know, I've had these pictures. I just assumed that me seeing this face all the time was you projecting as a beta Z beta Zoid. Um, yep. and he's, even as he's telling you that, did you notice how he cradles the images to his chest? Oh Yeah. It's yeah. Very clear. You know, very, he's still, still very yeah. attached to this woman. Right. Right. In fact, he is in at some level disappointed. Yep. Um, and then we get the, uh, um, the the story that um, the ma the wedding ceremony of be traditional beta <laughs> wedding ceremony everyone is naked and you know it's very awkward and then uh, we we come to this point where Picard's doing his captain's log and he disdains beta zoid arranged marriages as unwise and unworkable yep. in the twenty fourth century it's very I mean every once in a while. Star, you know, Star Trek, Starfleet, for all its, you know, open mindedness about things, becomes very close minded. Yeah. Um, it's interesting how Picard would would kind of disdain this as uh, your know, arranged marriage is not workable. Um, yeah, and I, I think you know an argument could be made that maybe it's the opposite. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, I look at my my grandparents. My my dad's parents were. It was you know, they were connected betrothed as children by their parents and yep. they were married for 60 70 years and loved each yeah. other very much yeah and it's well it, it's interesting because even non-arranged marriages but marriages of i don't want to say convenience but marriages of necess necessity might be a way necessity to you sure. hear stories like out here in the in the old west out here and as people were settling you know they might have come out with spouses and their spouses died and then they ended up, you know, like their neighboring farmers and they ended up marrying and so they could merge their farms. Right. And survive, you know, at a right. time when it was very difficult to survive. So it really was a marriage of necessity. But they also ended up, you know, developing that love and spending their life together and everything. Well, I mean, because the fact is is love is an act of the will. You did it's not mm -hmm. just the fuzzy feelings you feel for someone when you're first getting to know each other. I mean Rom those romantic feelings are important, yeah. but it's part of a decision you make. And this is one of the problems we have in society at large. Mm -hmm. If we could go off on that a little bit is how often people, I don't, I just fell out of love or I don't have those fuzzy feelings anymore. Yep. Or, you know, the spark is gone and it's like, well, you know, you decide to stay in love with somebody that is, you know, the, those fuzzy feelings of youth go away. The marriages that last for 50 years are people who have remained committed and have decided, I love you. It is my will mm -hmm. to love you. I will this uh, love for you. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, anyway. That's... Well, and it, it's, you know, when we talk about, you know, our Lord says, Jesus says, you know, that the two become one flesh. You know, and yep. of course, we always, we naturally focus on the physical aspect of becoming one flesh. Right. But it's also the emotional, the spiritual aspects become one flesh as well. Yes. You know, one connection, you know, unite in that. And you see what happens when that's broken. You know, both of us have lost parents. You know, we both yep. lost our, our mothers. You've lost both your parents now, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but, um, you know, we, we see the connect, what happens when that connection is broken by death. You right. Know, and how that, there is that loss. Yes. Right. Yes, that's true. And so to, to disdain like a, a range marriage, like people who are in arranged marriages can love each other very much and love each other for decades. Um, you know, that it, in fact, sometimes I think who knows you better than your parents in some ways, you know, what I mean? mm -hmm. you know, and maybe, you know, the way we do it now, I mean, especially nowadays with the, oh. you, you let an app connect you with somebody. <laughs> How about somebody who knows you and loves you? Wants, well, you, wants know, you to be happy. Well, let, let's be honest. It would take out the uh, awkwardness of marriage. That's for sure. Of, of the dating scene. Right. Right. This you is... know, cause you're, you're like, okay, do I go approach him? You know, how do I talk to him? How do you know the, the old, you know, I'm going to talk to him this way. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that, you know, all that's gone. Yeah. 
<laughs> and if you're lucky as a kid, you know, you you get matched up with someone who's normally out of your league. <laughs> Yeah. Just, yeah, like Just this kidding. case. Oh, I mean, no. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I I felt like the whole that Picard log was really kind of awkward. Um, and then we have the Torellians show up. This Torellian ship, mm -hmm. and they talk about how um, the story, their cautionary tale. They killed themselves off in a biological war that unleashed a deadly virus in a pandemic. We wouldn't know anything about. No, no, we wouldn't Unleashing, know about it, like a virus being released and causing by, a pandemic. And yeah, biological warfare or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> luckily, we didn't kill each, kill ourselves off with it. No. <laughs> but, um, and then sort of this horrific idea that infected Torellians who survived, they, they survived, so apparently they're not going to die of it, but they're infectious, so they can, they can mm -hmm. infect other species, I guess, too. Um, that's a pretty virulent disease. Yeah. Um, and so the the survivors were hunted down and exterminated by other races, which is kind of brutal, cold, yeah. and horrific. So it, yeah, it, even though they they were willingly staying away from all other species. Yes. So this must have been a pretty bad disease to begin with. Yeah. And we find um, out that this is likely the last of that species. This is the last ship. Right. Right. So. Um, we in the midst of this and so and then the people of haven are like well, we've got this ship coming and we have a treaty with the federation to protect us and we yep. don't have our own defenses so you have to go destroy them and picard's like i'm not shooting a ship full of innocence you know yeah and so this is the 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 plot that is ongoing under you know at the same time as we're doing all of this wedding stuff so we have um we have another scene where it's like sort of a engagement party rehearsal dinner yeah, kind of, of rehearsal dinner seemed kind of like planning dinner type of deal. <laughs> yeah, and um, uh, we 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 were told that um, Mr. Hump can't even talk, but he does have this single line where Data, um, <laughs> Data, he's at the party. Mr. Hump is just pounding back the drinks. Oh, he like, enjoyed them, and he was feeling pretty good. You could tell. <laughs> Data says to him, um, "By by any chance, are you uh, related to humans because of the way the amount of alcohol that you could consume?" I just was kind of. And, and, yeah, Mr. Hom does the kind of like the, huh, mm, you know, uh, stick up his nose. How dare you suggest me. such a thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although at the at the end, is his single line in the transporter room as he's about to leave says to Picard, "Thank you for the drinks." Yep, <laughs> just that line. Um, data data in this scene though is just incredible oh. i mean he's got like that that little kind of half amazed grin that he has or smile that he has and <laughs> yes. it just oh please please keep up your your petty bickering yeah 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 deanna storms out you know stop this petty bickering all of you especially you mother and then she storms out and, and uh data says could you please continue the petty bickering i find it most intriguing yeah <laughs> <laughs> picard had just uh told him to stop hovering like around the table well, looking yeah. at people like like as a vulture <laughs> examining things uh yeah that was a, so he's intrigued meanwhile Riker sulks continues to yep. sulk um and in fact it has to be excused to go you know deal with the Torellian situation um and goes off to sulk in the holodeck um meanwhile and then the thing that causes Deanna to get uh, upset is Luxana instigates an argument with Wyatt's mom like yep. she intentionally Hopes, provokes her yeah with uh, her pet bush that's wrapped around her arm uh that's apparently um i don't know like alive like like uh, semi sentient i don't know like yeah. a dog like a pet yeah yep um so then we have um and then Deanna freaks out and they cut to Tasha smirking at Deanna's outburst yeah and i'm wondering if this was a bad edit like cuz i f i feel like maybe this shot of her smirking was supposed to be after Data's line about the petty bickering. Like, that's kind of a funny, awkward yeah. line. But Deanna, like, stop it, all of you, you petty bickering, especially you, Mother. Tasha's her friend. Why would her friend be laughing at her? So, it Unless just, laughing at her. Yeah, it's supposed to be laughing at Luxana. Yeah, it could kind be. Kind of being told off, basically. I felt like there was some sloppy editing in this episode yeah, no, I, be because there was also a, a line just before this where Wyatt's dad stumbles, like it's a very clear stumble over saying Mr. Hom. Yeah. And they kept it in. I just, I just thought well, it was kind of weird. And even Data, you know, of course, he, he is moving around the room, but 
there's, you know, there's the scene he's standing behind Picard and the next scene he's standing next to Mr. Hom. Yeah, that's right. You know, and, and again, it's another one because he was over there talking to Mr. Hom and then he was behind Picard and then he was back over by Mr. Hom. Right. Right. So yeah, there was the editing in this, at least in this scene was weird. I don't know about the rest of the episode, but this, yeah, the editing in the scene was weird. So, um, Riker, when he left, was not going to do, to go, um, figure out the Torellian plague ship situation. He was going to sulk in the holodeck where Deanna finds him. And, uh, you know, he says, Hey Deanna. And she's like, am I no longer Imzadi to you? And, and he's like, well, you're about to get married. Is your heart so small for, to, that you can't continue to find me beloved. And it's like, uh, you're going to be married to another dude. <laughs> the two That's options. your beloved now. Yeah. Right. She's like, you know, Oh, so, um, what did she say? Something about, uh, platonic love and physical love. Like as if those are the only two options that yeah. you can have in a relationship. Well, you know, and I'm like, are you really qualified to be a therapist for humans? If this is how you think about <laughs> human emotions, like it just was weird. Like, um, yeah, like, no, of course he's upset and can't call you Imzadi anymore because you're married to this other dude. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, you, you, you missed the one part with, uh, Picard where, it's Starfleet tradition that social gatherings gatherings aren't place for oh yeah. for disputes. So I I I rule this dispute settled. And it's like yes, no, that's not <laughs> how that works. Yeah, uh, all all disputes have been have been settled. Uh, yeah, so how, how well is that going to work? But yeah, that 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 whole that's another one where she was just it was just an awkward scene with her. You because know, right. for most of this, actually, Deanna Deanna comes out pretty good in this in most of this this right. episode you know she's not quite as cringy as she can be elsewhere yes but i feel that you're uh, yes <laughs> i feel joy <laughs> oh, that was... yeah the line but, uh, she says here is humans young human males particularly have difficulty separating platonic love and physical love and it's like well those aren't the only two options <laughs> like they can also be you know emotional love romantic mm -hmm. love uh, yeah, yeah. That was that was a bad line, yeah. But but it's just this this scene. She just comes off bad, you know, kind of like yeah. She wants her cake and eat it too, you know. I'm gonna go through with the marriage, but I, I also want you know my boyfriend on the side, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it is weird. Yeah, I mean, maybe again, maybe that's a betazoid thing where it's we're okay with this, but that's but you know humans aren't, <laughs> as Breaker yeah. says, like hey, call it an old Earth tradition, uh, habit of the beasts, whatever. But I'm not okay with it. Um, and then Wyatt walks up and it's like, how did he like, he's like snuck up on them. Like he heard, like uh, while they're talking, yeah. it's like, we didn't hear the, the uh, holiday doors open and close. No. <laughs> how did he manage to sneak up on them? But of course we had to have this dramatic, like he just appears thing. Yeah. And again, that's, that's probably another bad edit though. They forgot to put the sound effect in. Right. Right. Yeah. But, but, but if they put the sound effect in, they would have known he was there. We lose that. Oh, shock. The, he, well, your, the your fiance is right here. They weren't standing that far away from the arch anyways. So, I mean, yeah, it was just right there. It was just, it was awkwardly. It's just awkward. No, it just, yeah. it was a very awkward scene. Beautiful scene. I mean, they did a beautiful job on the matte painting and everything, but yes, I, I did read somewhere that, um, Roddenberry really disliked the soundtrack on this one. And, and I could see why there was some awkward we keep using that word it applies a lot in this episode yeah. this is just um, an awkward episode this really is an yeah. awkward episode it was like awkward 80s semi-romantic you know um dramatic show theme music you know it just mm -hmm. felt very much of that sort of thing it didn't fit with star trek very much uh, so i could see what he was saying um so we have uh the torellian ship com the it comes to a head it's going to approach the planet that's refusing to communicate. So they throw a tractor beam around it, which we're told prevents transporter use. Didn't know that. Apparently. <laughs> First time that's happened. Um, and then we get the, you know, the, the, they finally appear on the view screen and we see the beautiful blonde uh, California surfer girl. Uh, yeah. with the hair the 80s hair like that big, oh yeah oof. she's got the big hair <laughs> um and she's there and deanna's like whoa how you know you're the girl from the drawing um and so 
Wyatt is called to the bridge. He confirms that she's she's the one. They confirm they know each other. And he ends up going to Lawaxana, which is interesting. And, you know, how can this be? Like, how can he, a human, and her, a Torellian, have been communicating f over these, you know, Telepath long distances telepathically? telepathically. Through dreams, yeah. Right. And apparently Torellians are not telepathic naturally either. And so Lawaxana says... To to the to why the answer why is so simple, all consciousness is bound together, all part of the force. <laughs> we are one. Yeah, <laughs> like okay, that seems. And they say good. kumbaya afterwards. <laughs> it was kind of a weird stretch. Like okay, yeah, just you know, just hang a lantern on that. We're we're moving on. <laughs> see, see again, this was this was kind of some of the. I used to call it like neo Buddhism. I don't even know if that's like the phrase for it, but that that, yeah. that kind of secular humanist Buddhism that you, was so popular or becoming very popular at this time that right. still kind of hangs out there. Yeah, it's just like a secularization of Buddhist concepts, and yeah, yeah, it's kind of feels like that. But like they just, it's sort of hand waving though. Like the writers, like it's not important how they tell they they communicate telepathically. It's just they did. It's it's the power of love. You know, it's like true love. Love, true love is what brings us here today. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Wyatt ends up sneaking aboard the Trillian ship, and Deanna knows what he's going to do. Like, it's clear she knows he's going, mm -hmm. and she lets him go. Um, I think maybe she's like, oh, now I can get rid of him conveniently. <laughs> Conv yeah, convenient. Let's, let's pawn him off on the, uh, the, the hot. <laughs> The hot blonde. The hot blonde plague chick, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, and uh, so Wyatt's there with his 80s wave, and she's there with her 80s poof, and it's the romance of the 80s hairdos. I mean, that's really what it yeah. is. I have to say, actually, the, uh, the, the makeup guy won an Emmy for hairstyle in this episode. Seriously. <laughs> yes, he did. I saw the, the award. They listed the awards. He won an Emmy. It's okay. It was the it's 80s. Very 1980s, like you said. I mean, that, <laughs> yeah. that's. Um, and then when you see, when we see White on the view screen on the Trellian ship, Riker in the background does a little bit of a happy dance. He's like, oh, yeah. very nice. He's yeah. dead. My, my rival is out of the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um <laughs> And then, uh, and then we have the final scene of uh, Luxana beaming away, and um, this is when she does the. Well, the captain's highly attracted to me, but he's a little too old. Perhaps I should choose you, she says to Riker, and uh, um, he has other obligations, mother. Um, and he's, oh, he's got his his you know smart <laughs> smart aleck grin on at that point, you know, kind of amused by the whole thing. Right, and then just as she's about to beam away. Um, she does in the uh, tele telepathically try and remember your heritage a little one. And then out loud, Captain, even Zelo never had such thoughts about me. You may energize. And Picard's like, what? And, and <laughs> Troy's, that was meant as a joke, Captain. I was not amused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, yeah, and that's the beginning of the, the long running Luxana Picard joke. You know, I was thinking. It's too bad that Major Roddenberry has passed away at you know in in 2023 as yeah. we record this cuz we could have seen the continuation of this in Picard. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> that yeah. would have made it very, been very interesting to see her come back in Picard. Well, now she did record the phenomes, you know the, the 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 sections of words or the the sounds for words. Right, right, the so, phonemes. Yeah. The idea was supposed to be ph phonemes. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> Because the idea was supposed to be, she was supposed to continue as the voice going forward, like of the card computer, like that, of the computer. Yeah. You know, so they could digitally bring her back because we already have the capability to, you know, do the face matching like they did with Luke Skywalker, where they de-aged him and things like that. It right. wouldn't be much of a stretch to make her, but of course, that would be, you know, would right. first of all her estate even go for it, right? Well, the Roddenberry estate, yeah. I mean, it it's. Yeah, I mean, if anybody would, they would because they they're Star Trek. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I think it, I I think in general with this sort of thing, and you know, with the actors who've passed, I think it's better to just let them have passed and yep. move on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, at, at best, use old footage or something like that. 
You know? Yeah, yeah. I, it's it's fun to imagine what would have been and kind of leave it at that. And, and exactly. There. Yeah. Exactly. Well, just they don't do big finish for Star Trek. That would be kind of fun to have like a somewhat imagine the Loxana and Picard. Well, um, I mean, there's the books and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of fun. Yep. Uh, so that's all the notes I have for this episode. Do you have anything, Father Corey? Well, we know that uh, Haven has a Stargate, so I don't know what their address is, though. <laughs> That's right. Obviously, not telling you about Stargate SG, you know, Stargate SG One Stargate, but but you yes. can hear about that Stargate on Secrets of Stargate. Yeah, they came through a Stargate. I, yeah, I was, I was like, what does that mean? I, I'm guessing, uh, you know, kind of like an access, you know, corridor to get into the get to the planet. You know, you got to go through this point to get yeah. to the planet. I don't know. Yeah, it was kind of weird. Yeah. It was just kind of a different, you know, it, it was a way of saying, you know, they, they by- bypass normal channels, right. basically, and are approaching right. the planet silent. Yep. Um, cool. That's all I got. All right. So uh, let's wrap it up there then. We'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secrets of Star Trek, including Jan C., Brent B., Anthony V., Rebecca L., and Attila H., their generous donations, uh, tax-deductible donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue The Secrets of Star Trek and all the shows at StarQuest. And you can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. We'd also like to thank Victor Lambs, who edited this episode. So that's it from us. We'd love to know what you think of this TNG episode, Haven. You can let us know by commenting on the show at sqpn.com slash trek or our Facebook page at facebook.com slash starquestmedia, or send an email to trek at sqpn.com, or visit our Discord community at sqpn.com slash discord. You can now watch us on The Secrets of Star Trek in full video on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash starquestmedia, where you can also leave comments. And we'll be back next time, where we'll be discussing the Deep Space Nine episode, The Storyteller. Oh, <laughs> I might have to miss that one. That's you all Haven, you, Jimmy. If you think Haven was tough, the storyteller. <laughs> oh. Until then, Father Cory Stika, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of Star Trek. Thank you, Dom. And once again, I'm Dom Bettinelli. Thank you for listening to the secrets of Star Trek on StarQuest. And remember, considering the rate at which you imbibe, sir, is your lineage at all mixed with human? <laughs> <laughs>